Hey, so this is Marty, and this is my awesome video. Today I'm making stretcher bars for a, a piece of art that is 40 inches by about 34 inches. And I cut these stretcher bar sides at 40 inches, and I realized the canvas, the, it's a polyester tapestry. It's going to be only 40 inches. So I need one and a half inches on each side to stretch around the side of the stretcher bar. So here I'm just cutting off that extra length. And then I have to figure out how tall the sides will be because I want it to be the same proportion of the original painting which is 32 inches by 42 inches with the frame so I decided to make make it uh, 30 So I made it 28 inches tall for the stretcher bar, and that will give it, uh, that will work for the size of the tapestry I have. So now I have the, the top and the bottom cut to do some calculations to figure out that 28 inches, and then uh, I'll cut the sides. And the frame will be, in order to match 42 inches wide, I'll need a frame that's three inches wide. So I'll use one by threes for that. That will give it three inches on each side plus a quarter inch of spacing so an eighth on each side because it'll be a it'll be floating inside inside the frame so here I am marking the boards to cut the vertical pieces, and I'll be cutting those. I did this before with screws, and I'll be doing it with screws this time too. If you get, if you buy stretcher bars at the craft store, they have these little triangular splines and they fit into each other, but you're You'll have to pay about 40 bucks for what I'm doing today, where I paid only $3 for each 8-foot piece. And there's the cost of the screws and drilling and cutting, measuring. I think I'm stumped here. For the frame, I'll probably uh, I'll probably stain it as well. So I haven't stained anything before, but it shouldn't be too difficult. And I'll for the frame, I'll have to make uh, miter cuts on the corner so they're forty-five degrees. And I have the, I have a clamp. I can't remember what it's called, but it has this line that goes around the outside and you can clamp all four pieces 
and glue them. And that should be fine to keep those, keep the frame together. So here I'm finally cutting the vertical pieces. So much fun. The art that my client chose is, was generated with AI. It's a psychedelic tree with a painted sky. The, the top part of the painting would have been, would have been cut off or stretched around the frame. So with AI, I was able to zoom out and then AI fills in the extra space. And it gives you four options with what, uh, four options of how it regenerates that outside border. So I picked the, my favorite out of the four and then I upscaled it. I upscaled it to something like 7,000 pixels. And that will give me the a good resolution to have it printed. So once I get that in the mail, I'll be able to stretch it over the frame. Here we are, I got the two pieces and that's about the size the stretcher bars will be. Now at this point, I couldn't remember if I used nails or screws, so I thought about the logistics of nailing it together, but I don't really have a clamp that would make that work. And I don't have a nail gun. In this scene, Marty is confused. But eventually I realize I use screws. That's what I did on an even bigger piece. It was uh, five feet by three feet. And then I put a support in between. This one, I'm not sure if I'll need a support, but maybe in the corners just to keep it square. I might do that in the next video. And then the video after that will be stretching the art over the stretcher bars. Well done with the saw. So here I start using the clamp that I was talking about. That's used more f for once you add glue, it'll hold together the corners so that the glue can set and it will make sure the corners are really tight and in the right place. The wood I used isn't the best quality, so it's a little warped, but it'll be fine for this application.
and I won't use this tool for the stretcher bars. I'll use it later for the frame, but here I'm just trying to figure out how to get it working. Put the corners, put those black things on each corner. And then you can tighten it. It keeps everything in place. So that was fun. But I don't need to use this tool now. I realized at this point I had to put in some pilot holes and then some screws on each corner. My brain is not working. I'm trying to figure out how to get the nails in. I wonder how strong the screws are compared to the spline and wood method that you can get at the craft store. Maybe I'll do some stress tests with a sledgehammer. Now I've got the right idea. So I'll drill two holes on each corner. And I'll use, I think they're one and a half inch screws, exterior screws. And I'll do another one of these that's five feet by three feet pretty soon. Once I get this one and the frame done,
I don't know how the polyester tapestry compares to a actual canvas. I think a canvas is thicker than what I'm using. I know people do use polyester for paintings. It seems to be strong enough to stretch it like this. I was reading that canvas is a natural material and polyester is a plastic material. But they're, they both perform pretty well. I just don't know about the thickness. The, thick, the polyester I'm using is pretty thin, but it doesn't need to be thick enough to hold paint. It's just ink from a printer. I made myself a hat. Now I need a second hat and then I can screw the hats together and form an even bigger hat. Hopefully I don't have to do too many of these. I will try to get as many customers. And once money starts coming in, I'll be able to hire somebody to do this work. This is all for my company called Marty AI. And this is for my first client. I have another client who has a painting by an artist who doesn't paint anymore. So he wants me to generate something similar to the first painting. And that should be no problem with the tools I have. That way he can show, he can have a series of two or three paintings that are all similar looking. Okay, that's two sides. You can see the wood isn't perfectly straight. So I'll need some supports on the corners.
Okay, here's the third corner. Put two pilot holes in and then two screws. The holes I'm drilling are an eighth of an inch wide. And I put two in just so that the wood can't rotate. Well, I guess one screw might be okay since they're kept in place by the other corners. Maybe I'll try the next one with only one screw. We'll get a nail gun. All right, now move on to the last corner. All right, last screw. I haven't decided whether I'll do a two inch or a three inch frame. I'll have to do a test to see if three inches is too big for that painting. Maybe you'll get some nicer wood.
There we go. There's the finish. This is a stretcher bars. Stretcher bar frame. Not sure what it's called. Okay, next video will be stretching the art on.